Le Mans. For nearly half a century, this attractive town, as typically French as the gendarme, has been famous as a center of motorsport. Today, the 24-hour race is the most important sports car event in the world, the severest test to which a production model can be put. For months, elaborate preparations have been going on. In varying degree, all the resources of industry play their part. Bringing fuel, especially for the competitors, this convoy of modern tankers makes a sharp contrast to the ageless splendor of the cathedral that dominates the town square. The world's fastest standard car is the Jaguar XK120. In the works camp, high hopes are pinned on the new Type C models. Team manager Lofty England keeps an eye on things, while Leslie Johnson talks over his chances. They should be good. With that former Brooklyn's Douglas exponent Jack Emerson on the job, it's certain that they will be. Again, the emphasis is on careful preparation. It may well be that if sheer speed is the deciding factor in the race, these Jaguars will have to fight it out with the formidable French Talbots. Then the XK120 engines will be called upon to provide that speed and the reliability that must go with it. Number 22 is the Sterling Moss John Fairman entry. Peter Walker's Jaguar gets a drink, and after its 103 miles an hour practice lap, it deserves it. Attendants at the filling stations each have their private fancy, and enthusiasts of all ages use this popular port of call to get a really close look at the entrance and their cars. With a host of international motor racing personalities gathered in front of the pits and packed crowds of spectators at every vantage point, even the steady drizzle can do nothing to damp the enthusiasm that prevails everywhere. The rain has eased a little. Debonair Charles Peru is ready with his starting flag. Waiting in the circles painted opposite their cars, the drivers brace themselves for the off. Dead silence. The flag drops, a patter of feet, and the 19th Le Mans Grand Prix is on. Away they go, Allard, Talbo, Cunningham, Jaguar, Bentley, Ferrari, Aston Martin, Lancia, Renault, Fraser Nash, Healy, Jowett, Sinclair, and all the other famous names flash past the pack fights for the position. Every car carries with it the fervent hopes of the many people who've worked untiringly for this very moment. Now, as the field streaks up to the Dunlop Bridge, it's up to the driver and the machine. The rain has stopped, but the skies are still grey and threatening. For the spectators, the bad weather makes no difference. Young and old of both sexes and many nations are determined at all costs to enjoy the pageantry, drama and excitement of the greatest race in the world. 33, Lorani, Lancia. 22, Moss, Jaguar, fast and effortless. Lap 5 sees him leading with Farnell's Aston not far behind. For the spectators, rest and refreshment are always possible. For the cars, the battle goes unceasingly on. This Ferrari strikes trouble and finds reversing into action both difficult and dangerous. The gendarmerie have a word for it too. The long, threatening rain is developing into a continuous downpour. During this period, the Jaguar driven by Sterling Moss became a casualty, but not before he'd set a new lap record at over 105 miles an hour. With cars soon to become visible only as shadows speeding behind the glowworm streaks of headlights, we must leave the race until the long, wearing hours of darkness give way to dawn. Morning comes cold and clear. Mercifully for the tired drivers, the rain has ceased and speeds remain high. Many cars have now retired. Among those still going strong are the splendidly reliable and rapid Aston Martins. The Macklin Thompson car is third behind the only remaining Cunningham, while ahead of the field and running beautifully is the Walker Whitehead Jaguar. The unflagging pace is claiming a mounting toll. The Red Crosses, marking the retirements, turn the scoreboard into a cemetery of high hopes. For the British supporters, however, there is warming news. The Jaguar is holding its lead. Every one of the Astons is still in the chase. In the smaller classes, Fraser, Nash and Jowett are well to the fore. In the face of stern international competition, British cars and British drivers are out in front, putting up a terrific performance worthy of the days when wearers of the green swept the board. But the opposition is tough. Number nine, the Mera Meres Talbot, is running second and lapping close to the hundred. In the other categories, Lancia, Jowett, Porsche and Monopol head the lists. The final pattern of the race is beginning to take shape and the word on everybody's lips is Jaguar. Jaguar. By now, the Walker Whitehead Type C XK120 Jaguar is way out in front of the field. This signal brought Peter Walker into the pits to hand over the car to co-driver Whitehead. 
This is motoring history in the making. This the machine, and these the men who helped to make it. With a new lap record already achieved by Sterling Moss and victory at the fastest times ever, within the grasp of number 20, these are proud but tense moments for the Jaguar camp. A race is never lost till it's won, and the Talbots and Astons are still very much in the running. As the hands of the clock move relentlessly onward, the large crowds throng the barriers. Here comes the leading Talbot, still fighting hard. And here is Peter Whitehead, motoring really fast. These Jaguars look superb and go as well as they look. In spite of the great efforts of Talbot, Aston Martin, Healy and the rest, it seems that nothing can stop the flying Jaguar gaining a clear-cut victory. To be worth entering at Le Mans, a car must be good. To win, it must be a world beater. And here comes that world beater now, the Type C XK120 Jaguar, a great car finely driven. Above all, it was Britain's day, for Jaguars had secured a magnificent runaway victory. This is a time to celebrate, to drink to the glories of the past, the successes of the present, and the achievements of the future. For these drivers have proved beyond all doubt that in the production of sports cars combining a high speed with lasting endurance, Britain leads the world.